From advertising to software as a service to data. Across all of our programs and clients, we've seen a 55 to 65 percent open rate. Getting brands authentically integrated into content performs better than TV advertising. Typical lifespan of an article is about 24 to 36 hours. If we're reaching out to the right person with the right message and a clear call to action, then it's just a matter of timing. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast, and I hear everything production. In this podcast, you'll hear the stories of world-class marketers that use technology to drive business results and achieve career success. We'll unearth the real-world experiences of some of the brightest minds in the marketing and technology space so you can learn the tools, tips, and tricks they've learned along the way. Now here's the host of the MarTech Podcast, Benjamin Shapiro. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast. I'm your host, Benjamin Shapiro, and today we're going to talk about the role of offline media and the future of marketing. Joining us is Jacob Ross, who is the CEO of PebblePost, which is the world's leading digital-to-direct-mail marketing platform, helping hundreds of brands to reach consumers at home with timely, relevant mail that activates buying decisions and drives conversions anywhere. Yesterday, Jacob and I talked about the rise of offline digital marketing channels, and today we're going to continue the conversation talking about why engaging customers at home matters most. All right, here's the second part of my conversation with Jacob Ross, the CEO of Pebble Post. Jacob, welcome back to the MarTech Podcast. Thank you for having me back, Ben. I'm glad I got an invite. Excited to have you back. I'm excited to continue our conversation. We're talking about broadly offline digital marketing channels, two things that you probably wouldn't think are related turns out you can actually get a lot of data and use digital technologies with all sorts of different marketing channels that are maybe considered legacy channels. You're working in direct mail, you could do out of home, CCTV, all sorts of ways to use modern technology. So that means that you can basically put your brand not just on people's computers or phones, you could put it on buses, you could put it in their home in a piece of collateral, you could put it on their television. So talk to me about the placements and and why they matter. Specifically, why does it matter to reach customers at home? That's obviously something that we're really passionate about here. So we did a bunch of research when Pebble Post was first starting out. And the question we asked was, what is the home and how important is the home? What we found, unsurprisingly, perhaps, is that over the last 10, 15 years, the home has risen in importance as a place. It's kind of like our command center of life as family members, but also as consumers, as discerning consumers where more and more, we all know we spend, if you wanna research something, you research online. Most people research online. Where you make decisions, more and more is in the home. And this isn't just because of the pandemic in 2020. This started well before then, but certainly accelerated through that, where consumers are making more and more meaningful purchases at home. They're deciding to make those purchases at home, whether it's what college they send their kids to, an expensive lifetime planned vacation, a car, a house, et cetera. You can do a lot of this in the comfort of your own living room and dining room. So it becomes really valuable, but also extremely challenging to figure out how to reach a consumer while they're trying to figure out one of these important decisions, but doing it in a way that marries two incredibly challenging things to marry, which is with relevance. So you're sending them offers that are actually relevant to what they're interested in and respectful, which is that the home is one of our most protected environments. So barraging people with a series of marketing messages at home is not necessarily welcome. So how do you do those two things together? And that's what led us to saying, well, we know how to understand intent through online signals at Pebble Post. The best way to then activate those signals and reach consumers with relevance is via the U.S. Postal Service and sending a piece of high quality physical mail to home that allows a consumer to consider at their own leisure what kind of product or service to purchase. And so that's where the home became a really critical environment and forum for us and our brands. I think this is a country music quote. I'm not exactly who said it, but home is where the heart lives. And you make your big decisions. It's where you go to to rest and be yourself. 
So finding a way to reach consumers at home can be an impactful way to deliver your message. Talk to me about the medium where you're delivering mail. We've gone through the junk mail era of the 70s and 80s where you used to take your mail, you used to shake it out, and what didn't fall on the ground, you'd actually open the letters. Obviously, we're not all tied to our mailbox like we used to be, we're probably focusing on our inbox more. Has the delivery and the mechanism of reaching people at home changed at all? There's an old cartoon that I'll try to find and send over to you, which is 20 years ago, you got an email and you were ecstatic. You're like, I got an email. And then you check your actual mailbox and it would be overflowing with offers. Now it feels like the opposite. Email is overwhelming as one way to communicate with a brand or anybody. But the mailbox is oftentimes a underutilized environment still. We have a notion in digital, which is my background, of competition. Now, this is where the ad exchanges came from. And I'm sure your listeners are very well familiarized with this, but the idea of a bidding environment, you bid for the right to reach Ben and get in front of him and get some of his attention. In direct mail, you don't bid. It's because there is an ample amount of opportunity to engage with consumers with relevance. So the medium is incredibly important and the nature of direct mail is that the consumer is voicing their choice at every step of the way. They display interest in a product or service. They choose to open their mailbox and walk a piece of mail into their apartment or house. They choose to put it on a dining room table or a fridge. And so if you can get through all of that, and we call that surviving the sort, is that sorting process where you're either you're a two-handed sorter or a one-handed sorter, depending on how many other things you have in your hands. But that sorting process is that's where the magic happens. And if you can survive that sort as a marketer, then the response rates that you get from your consumers are as high as any other advertising channel out there. And that's why direct mail, traditional direct mail is a $40 billion channel still, which is an amazing statistic that a lot of people who haven't been in that world before are really surprised by, but it's a huge channel what we're doing is adding that digital relevance on top of that and making those offers even more relevant and useful. Everybody that's listened to this podcast regularly has probably heard the story of my last real J-O-B, where I was working for a dry cleaning and laundry delivery company. And one of the realizations I had as a marketer was reaching people where they're having the pain is generally the highest conversion rate. When people are sitting at home saying, man, I don't want to go out and do the laundry, And you can deliver a message that says, hey, we'll pick up your laundry and we'll do it for you. Great. Kumbaya. We've found Nirvana. Talk to me about some of the industries, some of the types of businesses that generally perform the best when you're thinking about direct mail. We thought about that. We think about that a lot. So in general, we think about the nature of our channel. And the nature of our channel is that even though we can tell instantly if a consumer may be interested in an offer, it takes time to get a piece of mail printed, mailed, and arrive at home. And we usually we say two to four, three to five days for first class mail. And that time to home is really important. So all of that has to happen within the consideration cycle for a brand. So if it's a tube of toothpaste, personally, if I need toothpaste, I run out to the store that afternoon, grab it, come back. So piece of mail is going to miss me by a mile. So we look for brands that have consideration cycles that are longer than instantaneous. So it's a considered purchase. High average order value helps. So retail, we're very effective, financial services, travel, media and technology. And so we work with brands like Gap, Weight Watchers, Dyson, Bull and Branch, Majuri, Brilliant Earth, wonderful jewelry brand. And all of these folks are able to kind of work with a consumer along their consideration cycle. And that tends to be what works the best. When I was working at my last startup, I remember we used a brand called Lob, and I think we actually had to integrate their API, and whenever anybody would not have processed a dry cleaning or laundry order in, I don't know, 30 days or break their normal routine, we would send out a piece of direct mail offering them a a discount code. So we're using our internal data, we already have their address, and we're delivering an offer to them at home. First off, is Lob and that type of technology still a thing? And what are some of the other signals that you can use that are useful when you're sending your direct mail? 
We love the Lob folks, and we've had many partnership conversations with them over the years. What Lob has done a fantastic job of is building an infrastructure to allow mail to be automated, any mail, marketing mail, invoicing. There's a, such a huge volume of mail that's sent out every day that is really not efficient, API-driven, et cetera. Like you said, you integrated with their APIs. So at some point, we would love to spin up a real partnership with Lob where they become part of our printer network and they can be responsible for part of the execution of what we do. Where we really focus is at the heart of what we do. You know, we have software infrastructure that automates workflow, et cetera. But at the heart of what we do is a data and decisioning brain. The data that Pebble Post generates is pulled in from the brands that we work with. So we work with brands and we really try to understand and then aggregate what a consumer is interested in, their postal address and their buying purchase history. And we use that to build what we call the Pebble Post graph. And that graph spans the entire US, 130 million residential addresses. We have thousands of data points on every address we maintain with excruciatingly high levels of privacy compliance and info security. But that is the engine that powers what we do. And it allows us to do something that's very unique, which is acquisition marketing. So a brand may have their own house file of their own consumers, but if they're looking to find prospects, then they come to us and they say, hey, here's some of my best customers. Can you find other potential customers that look, act, behave just like them? Oh, uh, now I get it. Okay, so where we, <laughs> my strategy at using direct mail at Rinse was we're going to use it as a retention mechanism for our customers. But when we were trying to do acquisition marketing, we would basically have to send a piece of direct mail per zip code. So we're just carpet bombing, hey, Rinse is now available in your area, come sign up. And we're putting pieces of marketing collateral in their home, which is valuable, but it's totally untargeted. You're essentially able to build lookalike audiences for direct mail using your marketing signals. Yeah, that's exactly right. And that's exactly how we work. And we work with a large subscription company that has millions of customers. So not only do we help them with acquisition using those signals that we talked about, but they also come to us and they say, hey, we know a lot of things about our own customers. But if you can find the proportion of them that are actively in market for similar products, and you can filter my customer list to just mailing those people, that would save me a lot of money. And we use the same optimization system to do both. So either we're building those models that you mentioned, the lookalike, actalike models, or we're using it to filter down to just select the best customers for brands to run retention campaigns with. And we use the data to do that. Last question I have for you, finding the right targeting is incredibly important. Delivering the message to the prospect at home can be very valuable. How do you know what to actually say? How do you figure out how to put the right message together in your creative? What's the process for getting something in front of someone when they're in that mindset of butt on the couch, feet on the coffee table, they look at the offer and they say, I need to act on this and I need to do it now. The technology that we have has been very, very good at what we call predictive modeling. So if we expose this person in this household to this message, do we believe that it's likely that they'll make a conversion? The thing that we've added to that is a series of tests and learn approaches where we'll experiment with different creative types, call to action, et cetera, where direct mail is tricky is that it's expensive to test. So unlike some digital channels where you can test 100,000, a run of 100,000 digital ads and do that 10 times a day, with direct mail, it costs to test. So we are very prescriptive with kind of how we help guide brands through that process. But some things are universal. A strong call to action helps. Sometimes a discount offer helps. Sometimes it really doesn't make a difference. Featuring the brand logo prominently in the creative so that it's not a question as to what this advertisement is for helps. Personalization helps. So all of those things differ somewhat brand by brand, but we'll build creative level analytics into what we do with brands so that they can understand what's working, what's not. And as they build their marketing programs with us, which tend to be always on, we keep iterating over the course of their program. You know, I've done this. Yeah. And it works. For us, the dry cleaning and laundry delivery message was, hey, person's name it looks like it's been four weeks since your last rinse order. If your laundry's piling up, let us come pick it up. Here's $5 off your next order with a vanity URL to understand redemption. 
and it ended up being one of our best retention campaigns. Reaching people at home can be incredibly powerful. Just finding the right people can be challenging. That's where Pebble Post comes in. And that wraps up this episode of the MarTech Podcast. Thanks for listening to my conversation with Jacob Ross, the CEO of Pebble Post. If you'd like to get in touch with Jacob, you can find a link to his LinkedIn profile in our show notes. You can contact him on Twitter. His handle is Jacob A. Ross. That's J-A-C-O-B-A-R-O-S-S. Or you can visit his company's website, which is pebblepost.com. Just one more link in our show notes I'd like to tell you about. If you didn't have a chance to take notes while you were listening to this podcast, head over to martechpod.com where we have summaries of all of our episodes and contact information for our guests. You can also subscribe to our weekly newsletter and you can even send us your topic suggestions or your marketing questions, which we'll answer live on our show. Of course, you can always reach out on social media. Our handle is martechpod, M-A-R-T-E-C-H-P-O-D on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Or you can contact me directly. My handle is Ben J. Shap, B-E-N-J-S-H-A-P. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want a daily stream of marketing and technology knowledge in your podcast feed, we're going to publish an episode every day this year. So hit the subscribe button in your podcast app and we'll be back in your feed tomorrow morning. All right, that's it for today. But until next time, my advice is to just focus on keeping your customers happy.